Thales, Heraclitus, Empedocles, Satsiki, Democritus, Suvlaki, Aristotle, Plato, Hillview Family Restaurant. It's all Greek to me. That's right, we're talking about early atomic history. Hit the theme. Ain't nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Hello and welcome to another edition of Shu Fu Keminacha. I'm your host, Shu, and with me as always is Fu. What up, nerds? You know, Fu, this is part one in a five part series. Yeah, we have five parts here because we really want to show the theoretical progression of what we know today is the atom. And what you're going to see is that scientists are constantly experimenting and constantly revising the model of the atom. That's right. So let's get started. Atomic History Part 1. The epic saga begins. Ancient times to the birth of chemistry. A lesson from the atomic theory unit. Leucippus and Democritus, Greek philosophers, 5th century BCE. Experiments? Philosophy is based on reason, whereas science is based on empirical evidence, observation, and testing. Although based on some observation of the natural world, no actual experiments were performed. Leucippus was one of the first Greek philosophers to come up with the idea of the atom. Democritus actually wrote about the atom and helped popularize it. Conclusions. Nothing comes from nothing. Everything is already in the world. This is kind of like an early version of the law of conservation of matter. The word atomos comes from the Greek language and it means indivisible. This is not invisible. Indivisible means that it cannot be divided or broken down any further. So the thought process behind the word atomos, meaning indivisible, is that an apple was cut in half, and then the half was cut in half, and the quarter was cut in half, and the eighth was cut in half, and all those are cut in half again and again and again, until you arrive at something so small that your knife could no longer cut it. That's where indivisible came from. Atoms of different sizes and shapes are constantly being arranged and rearranged to make the stuff of life, much like the picture above. Atoms combine with other atoms using barbs and hooks on their surfaces. These barbs and hooks are kind of like an early version of what a chemical bond is, putting atoms together to make molecules. Aristotle, the highly influential philosopher, rejected the concept of the atom. He believed that matter was continuous, and the idea of the atom went out of fashion in Western culture for hundreds of years. The idea that atoms have different sizes and shapes and combine with barbs and hooks may sound a little strange to you, but remember this is philosophy and it's not science. We're talking about the Greeks though because a lot of their ideas did help lay the foundation for future atomic theory. Robert Boyle, Irish father of modern chemistry, 1627 to 1691. Now there's been a big jump in time right here and still the idea of the atom is not being discussed. We are, however, developing modern chemistry in terms of scientists experimenting. They're doing it through observing matter and seeing how it interacts, not in terms of the atom. Let's talk about Boyle's experiments. Although he did practice alchemy, which was popular at the time, Boyle was instrumental in helping develop the modern experimental method. Boyle is most famous for his work on the properties of gases, including their role in combustion, breathing, and the transmission of sound. Conclusions. Many of Boyle's conclusions are gonna sound very familiar to you from the matter and energy unit. Maybe. Oh, I maybe. You're not gonna notice a lot of mentions of atoms though, because we're not quite there yet. Matter is made of elements which cannot be chemically decomposed. Oh, I remember. Compounds are made up of elements and have different properties than their constituent elements. Oh, I remember. Oh, maybe. Mixtures are different from compounds in there being a physical combination of substances. I remember. The purpose of chemistry is to analyze the composition of matter. Antoine Lavoisier, French father of modern chemistry, 1743 to 1794. His experiments. He discovered the role of oxygen in combustion. Carried out many chemical reactions with very accurate mass measurement before and after the reaction. His conclusions? 
The mass before a chemical reaction is equal to the mass after a chemical reaction. This is the law of conservation of mass. Antoine Laurent de Lavoisier was a French chemist and biologist who first organized the list of chemical elements. Lavoisier was born in Paris, and after his mother died, he inherited the family fortune. He was educated in Paris and was expected to follow his father's career in law, but instead opted for a career in science. Lavoisier's passion was for chemistry, but he also studied geology and worked on the first geological map of France in 1769. Lavoisier married his 13-year-old wife Marianne when he was 28, and she helped translate documents and created sketches for him throughout his career. During his experiments, Lavoisier discovered the role of oxygen in respiration in plants and animals, and gave a name to the gas hydrogen. He also discovered that oxygen and hydrogen combined made water. He explained that air, which was previously thought to be an element, was actually a mixture of gases, and devised the system of chemical nomenclature, or naming which is still used to this day. He also wrote the first ever chemistry textbook. He conducted chemical experiments and carefully weighed the chemicals and the products, and stated that changes of matter in an experiment do not change the mass of the matter used during the process. He clarified elements and compounds, and also explained the results of other scientists' work with his theories. Lavoisier also worked as a tax collector, where he attempted to introduce reforms to the French taxation system. He was accused of being a traitor by the rulers of France at the time, and was convicted and executed by guillotine along with other tax collectors in 1794. His death was mourned by the French mathematician Joseph Lagrange, who said, It took them only an instant to cut off his head, but France may not produce another such head in a century. He was pardoned posthumously 18 months after his death, and is still referred to as the father of modern chemistry. John Dalton, English teacher. So he's English, and he was a teacher, but not an English teacher specifically. Chemist, meteorologist, 1766 to 1844. John Dalton is the person to actually bring back the idea from the ancient Greeks of the atom and actually integrate it with the work of Boyle and Lavoisier. He kind of brings it all together. Experiments. He studied gases and pressures. Notice that elements combine in definite ratios to make compounds. Conclusions. Dalton brought back the atom to explain the chemistry of elements and compounds. <laughs> Number one. All matter is made up of atoms, which are hard spheres. So here's where Dalton gives us the first atomic model of the atom, the hard sphere model. Now the hard sphere model is exactly what it sounds like, a hard sphere. There's nothing really inside of it. It looks like what we have in the picture above. Two, all atoms of an element are the same by atomic weight. Atoms of different elements are different. Three, chemical reactions involve the rearrangement of atoms not their destruction or creation. So this really ties into the law of conservation of mass because it defines it now in terms of atoms. Number four, atoms react in whole number ratios to make compounds. So linking paper clips is a good analogy for this. You always link whole paper clips together. No matter what the size of the paper clips, it's always a whole paper clip. So you don't ever link half a paper clip with three quarters of a paper clip. It's always whole paper clips. John Dalton was an English chemist and physicist, best known for his work on atomic theory and his work on color blindness. Dalton was born in Cockermouth on the west coast of England into a family of Quakers. He worked at a Quaker school until 1793 when he moved to Manchester. Dalton learned a great deal of his scientific knowledge from a blind philosopher named John Goff, and from this Dalton was made teacher of mathematics and philosophy at a college in Manchester until 1800, when he was forced to become a personal tutor due to lack of funds available at the college. Dalton began a meteorological diary in 1787, and made an estimated 200,000 weather observations during the remainder of his life. He also wrote a paper on the phenomenon of colour blindness, which had not been fully documented until Dalton's work was published. Daltonism became a common term for the condition at the time. He was then made secretary of the Manchester Literary and Philosophical Society in 1800, and in 1801 he published papers on the constitution of mixed gases, the pressure of gases at different temperatures, and the evaporation and expansion of gases. In 1808 he published a book called The New System of Chemical Philosophy. This was his groundbreaking work on atomic theory based on five propositions. The first proposition was that all matter is composed of extremely small indivisible particles called atoms. 
The second and third propositions state that atoms of each element are identical in size and mass, and that atoms cannot be created or destroyed. The fourth and fifth propositions are that elements combine to form chemical compounds in simple ratios, and that in chemical reactions atoms are combined, separated or rearranged. He also published the first table of atomic weights, as well as his work System of Chemistry. Dalton also lectured at the Royal Institution in London, and was awarded a fellowship in 1822. He never married and died in 1844 after suffering several strokes in the previous few years. That's going to do it for today's episode on Early Atomic History. Later, nerds! Today's episode is brought to you by... Knapsack Sleep Hood. Take a nap anytime, anywhere. Meetings. Worship. Sports! But we never off, always on to the break of dawn. S-E-I-E-N-C-E in the hall they call S.